Moonlight Cloud to make up the line. The French filly. The horse that could be the big threat to Black Caviar. They're just about lined up for the Diamond Jubilee Stakes. Six furlongs. And they're away. Racing. Slow to go. Blew the start. Society Rock. Well out Soul, who goes off quickly. On the stand side, it's Sir Bogart, tracked by Black Caviar. Tracking Soul down the centre, Jimmy Stiles in the yellow jacket from SK Love. Towards the stand side, tracking Black Caviar is Restier d'Argent. Followed by Pastoral Player, Raw Rock out the back with Society Rock. And also Genki and the, Je and the Checker is towards the rear. Moonlight Cloud is buried in the field about 8th or ninth as they race through the first two furlongs of Soul. So, and Soul has gone off quickly here from Bogart. Bogart in second inside the three. Black Caviar travelling comfortably on the right in third place. They're followed by Krypton Factor. SK Love on the far side. Restia Darjon. Moonlight Cloud in the white jacket. Beginning to try and get on turns with Black Caviar. Luke Nolan shakes up Black Caviar. What can she find? Sol went very fast. Black Caviar takes it up now. Chased by Restia Darjon. Moonlight Cloud is attacking on the stand side. Then Sol. Krypton Factor. Black Caviar's in front. Here comes Moonlight Cloud on the stand side with Restia Darjon, a twin French assault. Black Caviar needs the line. He's easing up on her and he's just scraped in. Oh, he did. He blew it. But Black Caviar, she's still unbeat. I think she's just scraped in. Moonlight Cloud and Restia Darjon breathing down her neck. Then serious prospect and soul and My goodness, drama, drama, drama. The cheers went up for Black Caviar. She looked to have the race in the bag, but on the line. I think she's won. Here we go. I think yeah, it's going to be called. Moonlight cloud, cloud rattling home on the near side. Resty Dargeon in between the two. And everyone's looking at a big screen here. Stand by for a roar. Black Caviar has won. Black Caviar has won. From number 12, Moonlight Cloud. Number 15, Restia Danger. In the cold at, in Melbourne, they must have been absolutely petrified because let's watch the closing stages. Talk, talk us through this, Jason. This oh was my dramatic. Word, oh my word. We were so shocked here. He goes to it. She travelled beautifully in the race. He had to pick her up. This is the first time that she's been really asked a serious question and he just reaches back, gives her a couple of reminders to go about her business and we've got two finishes down this side and just now he's coming to the line. He thinks he's home and hose. He starts to, he stops riding and then all of a sudden they're on top of the line. Oh my word, that, that could have been, been a disaster. So bad. That could have been horrific from a jock's point of view, but, uh, well, for everybody here, for everybody who's travelled halfway around the world, he just nearly ahead in the end. That man in the, in the apricot colours and dark spots, Luke Nolan, must be the most relieved man on planet Earth at the moment because it so nearly went hideously wrong as Moonlight Cloud and Restia Dangean were closing in. Moonlight Cloud was finishing really there's, fast. There's nothing like human error, is there? nothing quite like human error and we have just nearly seen nearly witnessed a monumental one but he's got away with it and he uh, I don't know if he mistook the winning post or, or whatever it was but just watching on the big screen behind us here Bob he's, he's gone for home and this is the first time that she's or what, what I've seen her race anyway but she's been popped a serious question and then moonlight cloud it is eventually in second and it puts the whip down, hands and heels, we've won. We've won. And then he stops riding and then goes again. Oh! It was, it was a, just a, 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 an inch away from an absolute disaster. That's how close it was. That's the official photo there. It's not a nose. I said that was a short head, but it's still, it's close enough for a lot of lack of comfort there. Uh, so it was the French second and third with Moonlight Cloud and Restia Dargeon rattling home on the near side back in fourth place was um, Society Rock having blotted his start. He sat down in the stalls. But um, we're just waiting for Black Caviar to return. There are cameras and both ordinary cameras and television cameras gathered round the 
parade ring. And there is Black Caviar. There's Luke Nolan. Is there a feeling of relief? I think it was for a feeling everybody. Of, I think it was a feeling of enormous shock, actually. I, I, that was r one of the most terrifying racing moments I've ever seen to, in my to, life. To sit back and watch that, and we were all going, what on earth is going on here? Now, news here, but uh, this is from uh, Tony Calvin of Betfair. Bat, uh, Black Caviar, a Betfair SP of 1.27, traded at 1.98 in running. Um... Moonlight Cloud traded at 2.1. Restia Darjo traded at 3.15. Black Caviar becomes the most traded horse in a race in Betfair's 12-year history of the £13.2 million traded on the Diamond Jubilee. An amazing £12.6 million centred on Black Caviar. That is enormous money. And anyone button-pushing there... I tell you, you'd have trembling fingers. You would have trembling fingers. She still hasn't come back here as the uh, winner's enclosure gets more and more congested, more and more people. And was it, there's not sort of a, a buzz of thinking we've seen something great. There's a buzz of relief. There's a buzz of shock here. She, she scraped home. She has scraped home. Um, and I can only think back to, to reading in the paper Peter Moody saying he's had a fitter than he's ever had her before. And I think that if, 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 if everything has been going to plan when she's 80% fit and she's beaten and smashing her rivals, then why would you tinker? Why would you change something? Because that is not as good as we've been led to believe she can, can be, that is for sure. And there she is, the team are getting closer and closer here to the uh, winner's enclosure. Let's quickly go back to Federation Square in Melbourne to see the reaction there. That was almost <laughs> extraordinary reactions. They were thinking, well, here we go. They're jumping up and down with relief. They, they knew that she just held on, but my goodness the me. Front, the front two, knew, front two rows knew that she just held on. There were still a lot of people staring up at the, at the big screen behind. Hysterical scenes there in Australia. And still we wait for this. Room. Oh, here comes the fanfare. 22 out of 22. She's now won 12 Group 1 races. Six lengths was the biggest winning margin she'd had. Uh, it's got to be the shortest winning margin. Well, most definitely. Most definitely. And here she comes. Just listen to this reception. Just coming into the winner's enclosure now, Luke Nolan acknowledges the very enormous cheers of the crowd. Fantastic. There'll be plenty more from the Black Caviar story 